good morning. It's good to be here with you this morning. My name is Marie, and I'm the pastor here at Community. And whether you're worshiping in the building with us or you're worshiping online, we're so grateful that you're here to worship God with us. If it's been a while since you've been with us or if you're brand new, we are so grateful that you are here. We are uh, just overjoyed that you've decided to come and worship God with us. And so if you're new online, again, we are glad that you stopped to check us out. Um, we want to be a place where you can belong. And so if that feels like something you want to do, I would love to be able to share with you some next steps about how you might jump in uh, to the life of the church, but also in your faith. And so if you'd like to do that, I will be right outside this door that goes up uh, to talk to you. If you're worshiping online and you would like more information about us, I would love to share that um, and how we might connect with you. And so make sure that you send me a, a, a notification on Facebook or YouTube or, or call the office, whatever that looks like, because we want to to be a place where people feel like they belong. There's a couple things that are um, happening in the life of the church. You know, as uh, kids go back to school and the fall sets in, I'm not sure, last week felt like fall. Yesterday did not. And so, you know, I don't know what's going on with Mother Nature, but however, I guess that's just being in Ohio. And so we would like, uh, so one of the things that happens in falls is we, we kick things off. And so we're having a couple um, things that if you are not part of a small group or a Bible study, and you would like to be, we have an opportunity for you. And so there's a couple uh, different Bible studies that are, or small groups that are happening. One, there'll be a new small group for women uh, that is starting. And so we, they would love your input on a day and a time. They're thinking the evening, because most of the people uh, that so far have said they wanted to do that work during the day. So it'll be an evening uh, sometime during the week. And so if you'd like to join a small group, a women's small group, we would love to to connect you there. And then we're also starting a new Bible study uh, called The Epic of Eden. And it's a New Testament uh, study to help us to dive into that Old Testament and really think about how that applies to our life in Christ today. And so if you'd like more information or if you'd like to join those, we would love for you to jump in. Because remember, part of our call of discipleship, part of that, that call that we are as Christians is to step one step towards Jesus each day. And so we want to help you to do that. And those are two opportunities for you to do that. Well, friends, um, let's continue in worship. Actually, if you would take a few minutes and fill out your, your, those black pew pads, or you can put um, on the back of your bulletin, there's a little QR code. If you'd rather use that, it's now working. We had it not working and now it's working. So if you want to um, just click that uh, forms, if you're online or if you're in the per in person, you can click to let us know that you're here and um, if there are any prayer requests that you might have. Well, friends, let's continue in worship. Let us stand as you're able, and we'll sing together our opening hymn, Blessed Assurance, page 369, or the words will be on the screen.
don't you turn and welcome one another to worship this morning. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the pleasures of this summer, the bright sunny days and perfect moonlit evenings, the smells of mowed grass and air thick with rain. Thank you for days at the lake, for vacations and festivals, picnics and cookouts. Thank you for the fireworks and thunderstorms, for summer's pace and grace, for all your beauty and power and faithfulness. Now, Heavenly Father, we give you our hopes our worries and fears as the children in our community and everywhere return to school. We pray that you would fill their hearts with excitement and calm their worries with your love. Please go before them, help them make new friends, and enjoy activities. We entrust them each day into your care, and as we do, may they grow in confidence and independence. May joy abound in their hearts as they enter this new exciting season of their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray all this. Amen. Amen. Thou art worthy is our hymn of illumination this morning. You'll find it on screen today. And now we'd like to invite the children to come forward for children's moments. Good morning. Is there anybody else upstairs that's coming down? No? Okay, perfect. Well, how are you guys today? Good, tired, school's officially back. Yep, all right, well, we're at the start of the school year, which is new and exciting things, but I have to ask, Miss Kara gave us um, something to do over this week, and that was our magic power. Do you guys remember what she asked you to do? Did you help anybody, or have help make anybody smile today, or this week? No? Okay. Um, did you do anything kind for anyone? Kyler, you did something kind? I can't wait to hear this. Um, she helped me clean my room. Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Helped, helped her clean her room. I think your dad had a part in that, too. But today, we're going to talk about another magic power. And this magic power is about obeying the rules and making sure we do what Jesus asks us to do. So on the way to church today, we probably passed about 50 cars. And today they were going fast, like faster than I do. And if you remember from past children's moments, Kyler was not very quiet about how I drive. So they were going fast. And while they were going fast, one of the things that I had to make sure I was doing was paying attention and, and being aware. 
so that we wouldn't cause a wreck. And when you get your driver's license, you learn all different kinds of rules for the road. Like you drive in the right lane here in the United States, you have to turn on your turn signal or you should. So there's lots of rules when driving. It's kind of like when, you're guy, when you guys are at home, you probably have rules at your house that you have to do, like clean your bedroom, um, brush your teeth. When you play in sporting events, there's specific rules you have to follow. Is there any rules that you guys want to share with us that you want everybody to know about? Maybe something you have at your house that you have to do? We are a quiet group today. Okay. So everybody must follow all the rules because there's none we want to talk about today. Oh, you have a rule? Yeah, and our house has to be spotless. <laughs> okay. She doesn't lie about that. We have to clean up the cat's vomit. <laughs> That's another one. Okay, all of the best secrets are coming out today. Um, and I swear I did not put them up to this. We have to make sure our cat doesn't open the screen door. And get That's a good one, too, making sure it doesn't open the screen door. All right, well, there's a place where you can learn more about God's rules. We, as Christians, have rules we have to follow for God. And they are found in the Bible. But does anybody know what those rules are called? Ten Commandments. You are right. The Ten Commandments. How many people in here know every commandment? No? How many adults know every commandment? Ooh, just a few. Okay. So I'm going to give you a short rundown of the commandments, just a, few, just a few of them, not all of them. So one of the commandments has to do with this, money. And money, sometimes people think that they need more, more, more money to make them happy. But that money isn't what makes you happy. It's what you have in your heart. And it's God allowing you to do the things that he wants you to do that can make you happy. God will always provide the money that you need to live on. And that it is um, part of commandment number eight. Another thing, and the girls will speak on my behalf, this is my work computer. And I spend a lot of time working, even when I shouldn't be working. Sometimes I think about work, sorry, Pastor Marie, even during church, because there's so much stuff I have to do. But I'm trying to ask God to help me with that. And that aligns with commandment number four. And does anybody know what starts next Saturday? Anyone? Anyone who knows, knows who takes the field next Saturday in Columbus? I.O. Ohio State is on the field next, next Saturday, and that's the kickoff to football season. And I bet you, did you know there's 102 plus thousand people that can fill Ohio Stadium? That's a lot of people, huh? What? Wouldn't it be great if we had 102,000 people that filled our church? We would have to bring in extra chairs, wouldn't we? And I bet you, yes, I bet you out of all those people, Majority of them know the 11 starters for the game. And the starters are the people that start on the field for both offense and defense. But how many of those people could name the 12 disciples? I bet not very many. What do you think? And that follows rule number one of the Ten Commandments. We always should put God first. We should know about God first and foremost. Whether you're in the football stadium or at home or in a car, you got to make sure that God is first and foremost. So today, I have something that I'm going to share with you. And back in the day, I sang in a choir here at church called the Joy Choir. And somebody that's dearly loved at this church, Esther Fouts, was our choir director. And one of the things she taught us about was the Perfect Ten. And that was a song that we all sang, and um, it helped us learn the Ten Commandments. So, from the Ten Commandments, we were able to memorize, and I can still sing the song, but I will spare you that. We were able to memorize all of the commandments. And so, I have something today that will help you guys, hopefully, memorize and remember the songs. So, I know vintage is back in stock, and this is really vintage, because this has the old burger logo on it. It wasn't the water bottle I was looking for, but this is the one I found. So you're each going to get a water bottle, and I know a lot of times you can take water bottles to school, so here's an extra one. Sorry, parents who may have a house like me that um, has a million water bottles, and that's the last thing you want. And then on this page are stickers, and each of the stickers are waterproof. I can give you a pair of scissors that you can cut out during church that you can keep, 
but you'd need to definitely check with your parents before you start cutting to make sure it's okay. But these stickers are waterproof, so your parents should be able to wash the water bottle or you, and each sticker is one of the commandments. So I put a commandment on each sticker, and then you can decorate your water bottle and cover up those old logos um, for you to have with you. So this will help you remember the Ten Commandments, but this special sticker on here I created is, says the perfect ten on it. And if you have a phone or your family member has a phone, they can scan that QR code, and it'll take you to the song, The Perfect Ten. So then you can listen to the song, and maybe that will help you memorize it too. But before we pass those things out, let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please forgive us for all of our sins. Thank you for giving us your world and the Bible and help us to keep our lives focused on you by following your rules. May we all go into this week living safe and healthy lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 through 17. And God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any 
foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother, so that they may live long in the land the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not cover, covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So before we uh, start, I just want to say for just a moment, um, so Bob and Joanne uh, Wol uh, Wolford have a 65th anniversary today, this week, uh, this week, 65 years. I said they should, could, should write a book. I often have the privilege of marrying people, and I would like to sometimes get um, some of the people who've been married a really long time in the room with some people that I'm doing premarital counseling with, because I think, oh, they have no idea. One couple just this week said to me, I don't, I, we are so, we communicate about everything. We barely have a, a harsh word between us. And I was like, oh, just wait. <laughs> you have no idea. You have no idea what uh, is in store for you, the gifts and graces. So, well, happy anniversary, and we hope you many more. And so let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for celebrations of, of anniversaries and birthdays, of, of remembrance. We just thank you. And so this morning we pause and ask your Holy Spirit to begin to stir in us something new. As we hear these Ten Commandments, Lord, have your way with us. Open our eyes, convict our hearts so that we might be open to you, being drawn closer to you in every way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I love a good rule. Now, not a dumb rule, but a good rule. Like some of the dumb rules that you all could add to this list, but I think the, the checkout line of 12 items and less I hate that rule. Like, why, why is that? Like, my, my items are very small. Why can't I have 15 or 20, right? Like, who came up with 12 items? Or um, what about at an amusement park when you go on the bumper cars, you have to be so high? Or that you have to sit that the child is not allowed to drive if you're in the car with the child because, you know, I guess you might hurt them or something. I, I don't know. These are not my rules. I think they're just dumb, right? Now, again, Teresha talked to us a little bit about some good rules. And some of the good rules might be things like, you know, um, turn uh, when you take a right turn on red and the curb lane, not maybe from the center. But, like, there's a, there's a bit of that. Or when d you go to Dairy Queen and you get a ice cream or a blizzard and they turn it upside down. And if it falls out, you get it for free. Well, I would hope so because it's on the ground now. But anyway... It's a great rule. I also really like unwritten rules that we live by in society. The things that we are supposed to, to follow. Like if someone, is, if someone is waiting for a parking spot, don't just run in and get it. Like that's like an unwritten rule. You let the person who's waiting have that spot. Or if someone's walking in a door behind you, you hold the door for them. You don't let it slam in their face. Or when you go to a restaurant, that you tip the waitress or waiter. All of us, regardless of our religious um, affiliation, fall somewhere in between loving a good rule, one that fits us, and the rules that we don't really like that feel too restrictive, the ones that tend to bend or break, that we tend to bend or break, those that feel a little too restrictive. And so if you are new with us and you struggle with faith, we could all learn a few ways to manage the rules in our lives. Now, the rules that we heard this morning about how we are to live with God and with each other, that's what these Ten Commandments are about. Remember that the Jewish folks, they have a, a 613 commandments. 
So I'm, I'm grateful we have 10. Now, of course, we have other ones, but, you know. Now, these rules can be, I, I hope you heard it when, when uh, Melissa was reading it, that, that they are sort of broken into two categories. The first four have to do with our relationship with God and how we interact with this overwhelming God. And then the last six have to do with how we interact and live within our community. Now, these ten are just the start of how we live within a community, how we interact with each other, and how we connect and relate to God. And so let's take a few minutes now to break these down. I, I love that we have these bullet points because that's often what we think about. We think about the, the Ten Commandments like they're bullet points. And while in one section of Scripture they are, this first ex explanation that Moses gives to the people has much more a deeper explanation than just simply, thou shalt not. The first one, a reminder of what God has done and what God is capable of doing for us, right? That's what that first commandment is about, is that, that God has done all of these things and that, that to have no other gods. And then the second one, God through Moses describes what it means to have an idol, we often think about an idol as something that you hold up or worship, and yet it's so much more. The author and pastor Timothy Keller from his book Counterfeit, Counterfeit God says, what is an idol? Is it anything more important to you than God? Anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God? Anything, you seek to get, anything that you seek to give you what only God can? So it means that an idol is anything that we put above God and our relationship with God. It can be a physical thing. It can be a, a person, a relationship, a, a job, an education, our success, our friendships, our church, even our civic organizations. We don't often think about idols that way. We often think of an idol as just an object, and yet it's so much more. It's these things that keep us and prevent us from experiencing God first. The text goes on to say that when we put other things in front of God, that God is jealous, right? God is jealous. Now, we don't often think about God being jealous. That feels like that's Old Testament, old foreign language. The idea that God would punish us for putting something other than God at the top of our list. And yet, when we put other things at the top of our list, things often mess up and they go wrong. We could have a, a great marriage except this one thing because we put our spouse first, or we hold our children up, not allowing them to grow up and change and, and be who God's created them to be, thinking that they were more important than anything else, and we've made an idol out of them. We find our, our lives are much more in balance when we create rhythms of gratitude and contentment, because God works out all the details. We don't have to worry about it. There's a gospel song that, that is called God's Gonna Work It Out. Now, maybe you know this gospel song, but it talks about how that we don't know how, we don't know when, but God's gonna work it out. That's what it means to say, well, I'm not gonna have any other idols, only God, believing that God will work it out. When we create an idol, we are not trusting that God will do that work. The key takeaway of keeping God at the top of our priority list is creating balance and, again, contentment in our lives. Now, Moses goes on from there and talks about what it means to misuse God's name. Now, while we were on the, hold on, I just want to say, in the Common English Bible, it says it this way. Do not use the Lord your God's name as if it were of no significance. The Lord won't forgive anyone who uses his name that way. So while we were on the mission trip, um, we tried to curb the teens and their, their, their word using God and Jesus. Anytime they would stumble, anytime that they would do something, they, they would use, they would say, God, and I would go, to God's glory, or are you ready to pray, right? Because we often think that that's what it means that when we put, when we use God's name in vain. And now, while that's the literal interpretation of the text, it really means to not misuse God, not to misuse God's name. And when I think about people who misuse God, I often think, so sorry if any of you like those, these folks, but televangelists, right? They kind of misuse God's name. Now, not all televangelists, some are lovely and wonderful, but if they're using God's name to get or gain something for themselves, 
Well, we've created an idol out of power and privilege that they have. Now, my grandmother um, had breast cancer when she was about 45 years old, and it was curable according to the doctors. And yet my grandmother believed the televangelist when he said to her, you will be healed. All you have to do is send in a little more money. And she did that for the next three years before she died. It was transactional. Now, tra televangelists are not the only people who misuse God's name. How often do people, us, you and I, use the Bible as a way to control others? We have no further to go than slavery within our own history to see this play played out. Slave owners use scripture to keep the enslaved people in their place. Out of a, a sense of obedience and oppression, they misrepresented God's word. Today, we have states that are insisting on putting the Ten Commandments on the wall. And while I love that, why are we doing that? Do those folks understand what those laws mean and how they are to bring our community together and not separate us? And so the question becomes, why are they using God's name? And is it for their own agenda or not? Because God's name is for worship. It's for adoration it's for communication it's for identification and connection that's what it means when we say god's name now the last thing that god that god commands about how we might connect with god how we might adore and worship god is through sabbath god speaks to how we are not to work because we all have a tendency to bring our work to wherever we are teresha you're not the only one the idea that we would simply take a day off. Oh, how can we do that? But not simply to take a day off, but to focus on our relationship with God. It's so difficult. When was the last time that, that you spent time that was set aside just for God? Was it a 24-hour period? Imagine what that might look like. We see this is a, a very serious thing that God works with the Hebrew people on. Even as they were wandering for 40 years in the desert, God provided a way for them to be fed and to take a day off so that they didn't have to go collect anything, that they didn't have to go work for their food. In Exodus 16, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. And on the sixth day, when they prepare what they, what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. In other words, God provides two days worth of bread so that the people might rest, refocus, connect with God. You see, Sabbath means that we rest in God, with God. Now, another way to ask the question about how we're, you're keeping this commandment is how are we resting with God? It might be that we walk with God amidst the day to day, the week to week, but friends, that's not what God intended. God intended for us to have a whole day where we might um, adore and be thankful for all that God's given us. And we have lots of excuses. Oh, I'm too busy. I have too much stuff to do. I can't possibly do that. Friends, I'm just going to say this. If it was important enough for God to take a day off, right, when God rested, then it's important enough for us. Now, after these four commandments, God through Moses, turns and creates a way for us to live in community with one another, those last six. We find that, that we have to honor our father and mother. Even in ancient times, we struggled with how we take care of and value the elderly. We know that there are our fathers and mothers that maybe don't deserve honoring. And if that's the case in your life, I'm going to challenge you to say, well, how might you honor someone else's mother or father? We must honor those who are older and wiser. Their role within our society might have shifted, but their value has not. Now, the verse that's next is about thou shalt not murder. And I want you to hear that this is about killing someone for a selfish perspective. This is not a, a military solution where we had a just war situation. That's not what this is about. Because if we remember, the Hebrew people called being at war in Ecclesiastes, it says that there's a time for war and there's a time for peace. And so this really has to do with that killing someone 
because of something else. The next one is committing adultery, and it's about sleeping with someone's spouse. To be clear, this was not about two single people. This is exclusively about married people. And from our 21st century view, it's hard to understand. And so sometimes we call those kinds of things affairs. And so yes and no. This is about using someone else's wife. It's about taking something that is not theirs. And in ancient times, if you remember, women were property. They were property. And so the idea that another man would simply take someone's wife, it is akin to stealing, isn't it? Now, stealing within the community costs the community its peace and unity. Think about if someone came to your house from your small group or your small group of friends and they stole something. They took something from you. It would create a divide within your friends, wouldn't it? God knew that this was one of those, this and the next two would create divides within the whole community. It's why they're in order. The next one is to bear false witness. That's to say something about someone that's not true. Today, this happens in a variety of ways. We don't simply just uh, spread gossip, but sometimes if we think about um, one of the most prominent places that we see bearing false witness is social media. Social media platforms all over the place bear false witnesses all the time. From pi pictures that have been changed to give us a certain impression, to manipulated speeches and outrageous memes, bearing false witness hurts the whole community and it breeds mistrust and chaos. And then finally, coveting. This is when I want that that you have. I want that person and, and it's because I deserve it. When we, covet it, when we covet against our neighbor, our friends, our spouses, our enemies, we create a sense of unhealthy competition and comparison, don't we? It's like, like I, I, we want to have what God has given to someone else. It's that covenant. covenant. I remember when my, husband, or my, my son, my middle son, had just graduated from high school, and um, I longed for him to be like all the other kids. I longed for him to move into a college dorm, to create long-lasting relationships, to get an advanced degree. I wanted what other parents had. And it wasn't just because I wanted the best for my child. It was more than that. It was deeper than that. I wanted what those other parents had, normalcy. I had coveted that. And yet that was not my son's journey. That was not the, the way in which he would go about college or, or a career. I couldn't be happy with what I had, and it bred this sense of restlessness and jealousy, resentment even. Now, is there someone or something that you secretly would like to be? If you could wave a magic wand, would you want to be different because of someone else? More like the Instagram or Facebook pictures that other people post. Now, God creates these, these rules or commands so that we might live in community with others and that we might build relationships with God. When we break one of these in our thoughts or our actions, we create a separation between us, others, and God. That intentional separation is called sin. Now, Jesus' desire for us is to live in perfected love. And this means that we live a life that, is, that strives to put God first in all things and that we live within our community in healthy and whole ways. As we wrap up this series, I want us to be sure to see our own selves in these stories. Where do you struggle? One of the main themes throughout the, this first two books of the Bible is really about how do we trust God how do we trust in that gospel? How do we trust that God's going to work it out no matter what? Where are you secretly in the middle of the night doubting God's love for you? What are those questions that you have? Where do you fit within these stories? Because let's be honest, Adam and Eve, whew, they struggled. They struggled with uh, knowledge and wanting covenant coveting something that wasn't theirs. Abraham and Sarah, they messed up over and over and over. And they had to learn to how to live within a, a new reality of their situation. Jacob and Esau hated each other. Talk about wanting to murder, right? That's in thought. It's what they wanted to do. And yet 
they had to put away their, their differences. Moses, Moses struggled over and over and over to believe that he was enough and that he could trust God with the entire community. If you see yourselves within these stories and how God is moving and changing you, I invite you to share that with someone else because these, his, these stories are not simply history. They are present, present and abiding within each of us. And so I pray that you will jump into them, looking for those, uh, those people that you can identify with. Now here are some of your action steps that I have for you this morning. The first is, which of these top ten commands with, of God do you struggle with the most? Is there one that you go, oh, I'm, I'm pretty good at all of those. Like I can knock out like two or three of them, but mm, I've got a few idols in my closet, right? There are things that you put above God. Are there other ones that you think, oh, well, I don't know that I steal anything, but oh, I might steal time or I might steal paper clips. Friends, stealing is stealing is stealing, right? Now, being in the story helps us to understand our relationship with God because that is the most important thing. It's what God was trying to teach the Hebrew people to be drawn closer and to rely on God, that God's going to work it out. And now again, I'm just going to challenge you. If, if this series has intrigued you, I'm going to invite you to the Epic of Eden study of the Old Testament. The information's in your bulletin or it's in the communicator. We would love for you to jump in. It's a 12-week course. It's, it's, it'll dive into these stories and ask the questions about how you fit within those stories. And then next week, we start a new fun, go, uh, fun series called The Gospel According to Willy Wonka. I know, right? Right? I know. Because we can learn from all kinds of different modalities and see how uh, God is at work in each of our lives. Well, let us pray. Good and gracious, glorious God, we sit in admiration of you. We are aware of how our relationship with you is not always the best. That even in these Ten Commandments, these Ten laws and rules that you gave us we struggle we struggle with a relationship with you we struggle with relationships with others because of our own doubt fear insecurity and so lord fill us with your holy spirit so that we might heal so that we might turn towards you in this perfected love that you pour out for each of us and we ask you, Lord, that you would use us, the church, in this wider, wider world. That we, together with others, might help end violence and racism and all the other isms. We ask, Lord, that you would help us to set aside our own agendas and to put your name first. We ask, Lord, that you would use each of us because there are many people in our community and in our world who are in need of your hope and your grace. And so let us be your hands and feet in this world. Let us fight oppression and injustice. Let us give mercy and grace because of the love that you have for us. We might be loved for others. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Thine is the power, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing.
invite you to give back to God. Remember that Jesus talked a lot about money. He talked a, about money more than, uh, than heaven and hell combined. And so we're going to invite you to give back to God. Remember that we have bags for you to take um, to bring back next week as a way to honor and to give back to God. But we invite you now to give to God. You can give it through the plate or through the on, online, but won't you give God your very best? We ask that you would use them in our community, that we would help others to know of your love and grace for each of us. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us remain standing and sing, Open my eyes that I may see.
Well, I'm not sure how he did it 10 minutes early, but look, you can beat the folks to get your brunch today. Well, friends, not really. Don't, don't do that. Well, friends, I invite you to go out from this place and ask yourself the question, where do I fit in the story? Because this Bible that we have, these words of God are for us to absorb, for us to live out and to guide us. And so may you go out from this place into the mission field and share the good news that Jesus loves us, he saves us, and he redeems us in every way. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, you may have a seat for our postlude. I'm going to pray here for all those that are on our prayer list today. Mm -hmm.